up for a couple of minutes. If you want to find out more about me, I've got a, a single Wikispaces page which links you to other stuff. So uh, I'll leave that up for a couple of minutes uh, for people to take down the URL. Um, you, you may be surprised that an old fellow like me, and I'm now an old age pensioner, is still dabbling <laughs> in this kind of stuff. Um, I read a report recently, I think it's a UCL cyber report, where they found out that the over 65s, and now that includes me, are on the web four hours more than the typical university student aged 18 to 24. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they refer to us as silver surfers. Yeah. <laughs> um, term which I quite like. <coughs> Um, the reason simple why these extra hours we've got time <laughs> I thought I might be bored when I retired some years ago but I'm wondering how to fit everything in now um, I'm going to give you a couple of links um, for further information if, if you are new to the concept of virtual worlds or if you already know a bit and want to find out more uh, this is the URL of the website, the ICT for LT website, ICT for Language Teachers, which, are, which was started 10 years ago. It was an EC-funded project, 1999 to 2000. And you know what happens with EC-funded projects. As soon as the money is cut off, the project dies and doesn't get disseminated any further. That's my experience anyway. I've kept this going as a labor of love. And that particular section, 14.2.1, which started as a very, very small subsection about five years ago, uh, which is about Second Life and Virtual Worlds, is now the most rapidly expanding section of the site. So if you go into the home page there, you'll find out more about it. Um, Norbert mentioned that I, I'm active in Europol, which is the European Association for Computer Assisted Language Learning, which has now been in, in existence since 1986 as a sort of ad hoc group of enthusiasts, and is, is now on a firm of foot in, in 1993 with the aid of EC Fund, and it, was, it became a, an officially recognized professional association. We collaborate closely with Calico, which is a slightly older organization in the United States. And this September of the Eurocall conference in Gandia in Spain, it was decided that it was time to set up a, a virtual world's special interest group, which we've now done. And uh, <coughs> we've established a, a NING called virtualworldsc.ning.com. Who uses Nings here? Any uh, any other Ning users? Yeah, few. It, it's it's a it's a sort of social network centered around a specific group of people interested in a specific topic. I mean, it could be a, a football club. It could be anything you like, and it can be a completely open Ning which anyone can join, or it could be a closed one uh, which requires the approval of the. Uh, Ning organizer. They're very easy to set up. I managed to set this one up in about an hour, which is pretty good. Um, I'm going to show you the beginnings of two videos. If you are new to Second Life, um, this is a pretty much a standard one. It's around in various places on the web. If you Google for silver, goldy, second life, you'll find it in lots of different places. I'm just going to show you a clip. Oops, if I can get back to that. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but we'll see how it goes. Welcome to Second Life, a revolutionary online three-dimensional virtual world. It's not a game. 
It's a community, a unique digital environment where people learn, work, play, and interact. A place that's imagined, created, and owned by its users. It's the next evolutionary stage of the internet, and it has grown dramatically since its launch in 2003. Today, there are over six million unique residents of Second Life, real people from all over the globe who exist in the virtual world as avatars. Hi, Chairman Markey introduced me as Philip Rosedale, founder and CEO of Linden Lab. In Second Life, I'm known as Philip Linden. Anyone with a modern computer and a high-speed internet connection can have his or her own avatar in Second Life. We're going to stop that one there. Um, you'll find that linked to in the ICT for LT reference that I gave you, or as I said, just search for Silver Goldie Second Life, you'll find it. It's about seven minutes long, which is why I haven't played the whole thing. More down to earth. That one's a bit sort of <coughs> cheesy. Um, this one is one I particularly like. Um, Karelia Condor is the avatar name of uh, a good friend and colleague of mine, Helen Myers, who has adopted Karelia Condor as her avatar in Second Life. And there's a, a nice little video she's made of her own experiences as a novice in Second Life and also as an autonomous learner of Italian in Second Life. I need to close this window down so that um, uh, I can call it up in another window, so if you bear with me just a second. Hi, I'm here to tell you about an absolutely compelling experience I'm having to help me with learning languages. I just can't help telling everyone about it. And this short video is an attempt to summarise my enthusiasm, as well as to share some practical tips about how to get going if you want to join me or others doing a similar thing. I've joined Second Life, and this is what I look like when I'm there. It's my avatar, and I'm called Corelia Condor. I downloaded the software, it's all free. I registered my avatar's name, and I went through various tutorials to learn how to do all the usual things you can do in real life. Listen, speak, read, write, move, interact with objects. It really helped as I had some real life friends who were able to give advice if I got stuck. But to be honest, one of the great things about being in this community is that you can feel free to ask anyone for help. You just write your question in the chat box and someone around will usually help you. To begin with, I just wandered around a bit aimlessly not really sure what to do. I went to conferences, I visited towns, and I was sometimes a bit embarrassed when I did stupid things like um, sitting on people, but I soon found that others are very understanding. And actually, doing things wrong provokes laughter, which I suppose is a special human thing, breaking down barriers. I gradually got more involved and made friends with a really generous and kind person called Carol, who encouraged me to rent some land so that I could experiment with making things and I could have a base for entertaining. And this is it. One day, I told her that I was really interested in improving my very basic Italian. And it so happened that at the very same time, an Italian teacher she knew, called Anna Begonia, was holding an Italian activity. I was introduced and I have never looked back. Every week, we meet together at a specified place and time, usually the Purple Forest, and Anna provides an activity which forces us to communicate in Italian. She has a fantastic range of methods for doing this, and she's always looking for ways which really exploit what Second Life has to offer, which are right. Okay, fascinating though it is. I'll let you have a look at that on your own. It's a very enthusiastic video, and uh, I think it's one of the best I've seen recently for getting the message across. I'll put that one up just again, very briefly. Well, it's simply kareliacondor.lib.tv. Have a look at it in its entirety. It runs for about 10 minutes, which is why I'm not showing the whole lot. 
It's a very good exposition of someone determined to learn about, learn a new language on her own in Second Life. Um, three projects I'm going to mention. Um, there's Avalon, which has been running since the beginning of this year, I think, developed out of another project which was started in Scandinavia. You notice there's, there's a Ning again, it's but its own little network <coughs> of people. Um, we should be able to call up the Ning directly here. Let's have a look. That's what a Ning looks like. <coughs> Basically, it's, it's a collection of... Um, uh, it's usually bigger than that on my computer. I think it's the resolution here. Um, there's a blog section, there's a chat section, there's a photo section where you can post photos, there's a, an event section where you can advertise events, and there's a, a forum where you can initiate discussions. Ning's all work the same way. And once you've got used to a Ning format in one, you <coughs> find the others. Nifla is another DC funded project based in Holland. Um, slightly different orientation. Avalon is more about teaching languages in Second Life. Nifla is <coughs> looking at two things basically. Traditional, in inverted commas, uh, web-based communication using video conferencing um, uh, facilities like uh, Adobe Connect Pro, Illuminate, and so on, which are now traditional, believe it or not. Um, it's also looking at the issue of intercultural understanding and intercultural skills. This is not so much a project. SL Experiments is actually a very enthusiastic wiki, which is managed by a teacher called Nergis Kern, who teaches English in Turkey. And it's full of fascinating stuff about her own experiences as an English teacher in Second Life, ideas that she's found that worked. Um, there's also a, a link to a blog. And uh, yeah, the, this is the wiki. Uh, website where which anyone can join and once she's approved your membership you can all contribute to the wiki, add in new links etc etc. I think those are the three um, most interesting projects I've looked at. Let's look at some of the pros of Second Life uh, as a learning tool. Um, the 3D visual context um, some people find absolutely fascinating, others hate it. I'm one of those that finds it fascinating. And my wife, who was absolutely uninterested in using computers for communication, was totally hooked by the concept of thinking in three dimensions. So it's a question of what kind of person you are. Ownership of space is something that happens in a 3D world that doesn't happen in the flat web world. It's forecast. Um, in fact, that in a few years' time, something like 80% of web communication will be in 3D worlds rather than the flat web world as we know it. Second Life virtual worlds in general offer a wide variety of situations and settings. We'll be looking at these in a bit more detail when I go in. It's a good social platform. People meet, they just chat, you find pubs, clubs, um, gigs, live gigs in Second Life. And um, one that I found which particularly interested me was um, there's a forum for cancer sufferers, because I was diagnosed with cancer three years ago. Um, I've recovered, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> but you can go in and chat informally and anonymously, which is very important. You can hear and talk to native speakers. As you move around virtual worlds, you can chat with them in text chat, or you can actually talk to them using your voice and hear them talking back. Virtual classrooms. If you want to emulate a face-to-face -face situation, you can do it. You can have a virtual classroom with students from all over the world sitting together. I don't think, personally, that this is the best use of Second Life. 
but it does work if that's what you want to do. And you do get a feeling of peer interaction, as if you were actually there, close together, in one classroom, rather than scattered all over the world. It's pretty good for task-based and project-based learning. There are lots of examples of this in, in Second Life. It's good for pair work and group work. I've seen some excellent collaborative group work going on, um, where students, for example, split into four groups, and they were asked to plan a meal. These are students from all over the world, students of English. And there was a central <coughs> table with lots of different items of food on, and then there were four other tables scattered around the site. And they were asked to go to the central table, choose what they wanted their guests to eat, and put it on each of the four tables. There was a lot of language <coughs> taking place while this was going on. They were learning the names of different items of food. They were learning the, uh, the verbs of positioning things on the table, put the turkey next to the etc, etc, that kind of stuff. And, and, and a lot of um, work centered around the task itself. How, how do you say this in English, etc, etc. Tandem learning, um, Jean mentioned this, I'm glad she mentioned it. Finding a buddy who wants to learn your language and matching yourself up with someone uh, whose language you want to learn. That has developed extensively in Second Life. Uh, you now have a buddy system in Second Life where you can actually locate someone uh, with whom you arrange to meet and you learn their language and you teach them yours. Lots of extracurricular activities, some of which I've mentioned. Clubs, pubs, chat groups, etc. There's a lot of opportunities for that. And of course it's fun. I do silly things in Second Life that I would never do in real life. I dress up in crazy clothes. I go to discos. I dance. I'm a lousy dancer in real life, but I'm great in second life. The cons. It requires high-spec hardware. If you haven't got a fast computer with a good graphics card, it will not work very effectively. It People say it's difficult to use. There's quite a steep learning curve in the beginning. Um, that's true, but I reckon that in a face-to-face -face workshop, I can get most people up to speed in the morning or an afternoon and get them into a position where they can go on learning on their own. Uh, in the module that I mentioned, the ICT for LT module, there's an introductory tutorial that I've written. It's downloadable in Word format, and it's aimed at absolute beginners in Second Life. And I've listed other tutorials that you can find on the web, video tutorials. Uh, there's, for example, Russell Stannard's excellent set of tutorials. You'll find links to that all in that module that I mentioned at the beginning. So although it is a steep learning curve, Think of it rather like the driving test. How long did it learn? How long did it take you to learn how to drive a car? It took me ten hours, but I was one of the clever ones. Um, ten lessons, and I passed. It took my daughter forty lessons. But once you've got over that learning curve, you get from A to B much more quickly and more efficiently. So think of it in those terms. When you see your avatars in Second Life, there's no eye, eye contact and no lip sync. It's a major drawback. The, the lips move like that, but it has no relation to what they're saying. You can make your avatars in Second Life gesticulate, but they're rather artificial gestures. They're not authentic. The way their body language uh, conveys information to you is, is, is fake. Second Life is not very good at presenting text. If you want to give your students text to read, you're better doing it in a more traditional way as a downloadable PDF or Word document or putting it up on a website. <coughs> there are ways around this, um, but it's generally not good. A problem that many people have uh, identified is the lack of established social norms. When you go, for example, to a presentation in Second Life, you get uh, a lot of text chat being typed in one window at the same time as there's voice chat going on uh, in the main part of the conference. 
And it does get a bit chaotic at times. I've experienced this on many occasions. But I think um, teachers are beginning to establish rules when you uh, join a class in Second Life or if you just meet casually. Lesson preparation takes too long. Um, that's probably true, but it, like lesson preparation with any form of technology, it gets quicker as you get better. It's unreliable. I'm praying today that when I go into Second Life in a few minutes, that it's going to work. I'm relying on a massive computer complex with its headquarters in San Francisco at Linden Lab. On two occasions at least, when I've been given presentations on Second Life, Linden Lab have decided in their wisdom to shut down Second Life for maintenance. They usually announce it, but then you get crashes which are unpredictable. So I do have a backup, <laughs> uh, as I always do when I'm doing anything with technology. But so that is true to a certain extent. I'm not aware that anything could go wrong today, but Murphy's Law. <coughs> the opposite of what I said at the foot of the previous page is not taken seriously. Teachers just can't take it seriously. Rather like um, Norbert said, toys, toys for boys. Oh, you're just playing with this. It. It's just a game. You know, you're just having fun. It's, it's not a learning tool at all. And last but not least, Institutional resistance. The number of educational institutions I've visited where you simply can't get in because it's blocked. Uh, schools, in particular, tend to block everything. They block YouTube, they, they block uh, Twitter, they block Facebook. They, their, their motto is block it uh, and think about opening the net <coughs> if people really want it. But you get this in universities. There are at least two universities I've been to where I couldn't demonstrate anything because the technical staff simply would not open the ports to allow me to, uh, to, to use Second Life. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to try and go through these quickly um, and then show you some examples. If you want virtual classrooms, there is an area in Second Life called Verlantis, which um, has lots of virtual classrooms. Teaching simulations, I think English City, which is maintained by a company called Language Lab, is one of the best. There's also a Spanish one called Ciudad Bonita, which I've visited. I'm trying to learn Spanish. And it's actually a, a, a mock-up of a Spanish city, but designed for learning purposes, for teaching and learning pur purposes. Simulations of real places. <coughs> if you're looking for London, Berlin, Paris, Barcelona, Madrid, Venice, ancient Rome, you'll find them in Second Life. Some of them are quite realistic. And some of them, I, I visited one the other day, it's maintained by the tourist board of the Jura region in France, where they've simulated... Uh, real places in the Jura region, in, in, including a, a mock-up of Louis Pasteur's laboratory. And apparently, he came from Jura, which I didn't know before that. Treasure hunts and quests, rather like web quests, you can do treasure hunts, scavenger hunts, and quests in in Second Life. The British Council has a very good uh, learning island called British Council Isle, where they have set up some uh, nice uh, treasure hunts as the uh, King Arthur one, I remember. You, you know others, do you, Nick? What's, what's the other? The Robin Hood one is one of them, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, London Eye. Uh, London Eye, yeah. Task-based learning, um, I've already mentioned that, the, the, the dinner table, the dinner party is one. Holodeck, who knows what a holodeck is? <coughs> Who's a Star Trek fan? <laughs> If you're a Star Trek fan, you know what it is. I'm going to show you one, or I hope I can. Holodecks in Star Trek, and a lot of Second Life stuff comes from, from Star Trek. Teleporting, moving quickly from one place to another. You remember Star Trek? You, you, tele up, you, you beam me up, Scotty, all that stuff. You know, you could beam down to a planet and beam people up again. You can do that in Second Life. 
a holodeck was in the starships, and it was um, an area for recre recreation. While the crew were away for years, they, they sometimes got homesick. So there was a room you went into which simulated a place you would like to visit. It could be your home in Texas. It could be Baker Street at the time of Sherlock Holmes. It could be anything you like. And you can do that in Second Life. There's an interesting project going on at the University of West of England where they are actually taking students around Spanish sites to give them a flavor of what it's like to be in a Spanish-speaking country as preparation for the year abroad. Um, I'm trying to find out more about this at the moment. I haven't succeeded yet, but I know it's going on. And uh, the team are giving uh, talks all over the place. Right, let's, let's shut that down and fingers crossed we'll now try and get into Second Life. Um, do I need a password for this? If, uh, if you haven't got Second Life already on your computer, um, you can download it for free from the website. It's called simply secondlife.com. And that puts um, a fairly small software package on your own computer. And um, you can see me in there now, but it's taken me out. <coughs> so it's, it's about to log me off. So I'm going to have to log off and come back in again. Frame it. Maybe it's a bit messy. It's because I, I, I set it up earlier on and then uh, I let it die on me. If, if you don't do anything in Second Life for a while, it logs you out automatically. So I'm coming back in now in my Second Life guys. That's my avatar uh, called Groovy Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can choose any name you like. I, I chose Groovy, not only because I... <coughs> Part back to the groovy generation, um, but also it was the name of uh, it's the racing name of my pet grain out that time. Uh, right, um, I'll sit down now because I need to. It is an area where you can get some very strange looks from people. Okay, let's shut that down. Right. It's a bit dark, so I'm going to change the environment to midday so it lightens up a bit. Um, let's just have a... This is me, by the way. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> um, oh. As you can see, it's a perfect representation. <laughs> um, I'm actually wearing the Europol t-shirt, uh, which uh, I designed myself. I'm rather proud of that. Um, anyway, that's me. And I'm now standing at the, the center, which is maintained by uh, Europol. I'm the, the guy who maintains it. And uh, next door, we have Calico. You can hear wolf howling in the background there. Um, that's our house in Second Life. Uh, let's, let's take a bird's eye view of it. It's, uh, it's a sort of beach house um, which we, we rent from a company called um, uh, the Consultancy in Barcelona. Um, we'll just have a quick look around the house. Um, there's a rocking chair on the porch. Um, you can help yourself if you go there for a free t-shirt. <laughs> if, you, if you click on the notice board here, you, you get what is called a note card in Second Life, which uh, tells you all about us. Now that's the kind of text you get in Second Life. But if you wanted to keep that, you can do exactly the same as you do in Word. You can, you can copy it and then control C to copy it and control uh, B. B to paste it. Okay, so let's just have a quick 
Oops, let, let me go through the door. <laughs> uh, down on the ground floor here, we have um, a projection screen, uh, which I can go into. And I can show slides shown on that simply by clicking on it. Anyone who comes in can go through that as a, it's just a PowerPoint presentation. At the other end, I won't show that one now because it's um, much the same thing, but that's a PowerPoint presentation that only I can control. Uh, that's if I d don't want it to move at too fast a pace. Here's one of our teleporters. I'm just going to go to the holodeck upstairs. I'll show you what a holodeck is. That's a holodeck, that big round eye. And what it enables me to do is to instantly conjure up any scene that I choose to store in it. For example, if I want a hotel lobby, it conjures up a hotel lobby. And I can move around that. If I were training receptionists in, uh, in a certain language, I could use that. I can clear it, simply by typing the word clear. I can conjure up another simulation. I quite like this one. Winter scene, complete <coughs> crunchy snow. Let's clear that one. So, what we can do, we can set up a variety of teaching situations that I can generate instantly, and any other teacher who comes along can generate them just uh, by clicking the middle of the blue eye, and then uh, and then calling up the desired simulation. Let's go back to the front porch. Oh no, hang on. Let's. We're going to do that again. I'm not going to go there. All right, let's go back to the front porch. Let's go somewhere different. Let's go to room one. <clears throat> this is how you teleport in Second Life. Now, on this screen there, you can show video in Second Life. Um, there's a predetermined one there, which you can show by clicking down here. It is an area where you can get some very strange looks from people. Some people instantly switch off and think it's all rather strange. It's only when you give it a bit of time and actually think through what is possible. I'll stop well, that there. Really experience. But in fact, I can play any YouTube video on that screen. I've got some that are already set. Um, if I go to my main menu, um, <coughs> some that I quite like. This is one of my favourites. You may know this one. Sandra Bullock. Mensch, bin ich nervös, weil da drüben auf dem Boden liegt meine Sprache. Okay, ähm, in was für großartigen Zeiten wir leben, weil irgendwann war ich mal Kellnerin, dann war ich Putzfrau, dann war ich Tispertänzerin, dann war ich Hundefriseuse. Wer, wer hätte gedacht, dass all diese Berufe mich eines Tages auf diese Bühne führen? Did you know she could do that? <lacht> you know why? Mother was a German opera singer, so... She had a bit of practice. 
I love showing that one to teachers when they're trying to motivate the kids to learn foreign languages. I say, well, you know, some famous people are good at it. Um, do we have time just to visit a couple more locations? Right. The nice thing about Second Life is that you can, you can go to a variety of locations. Uh, let's... I can't find my way around this and tell the <laughs> Right. Twenty years to go twenty years ago today, I walked over Checkpoint Charlie into East Berlin. Yeah, I was there. Um, I was interested to find this simulation, which is a simulation of the Berlin Wall in Second Life. You can walk through Checkpoint Charlie in Second Life. And there's also quite an interesting exhibition about the Berlin Wall. If you go in the entrance here, you can sort of walk down there and find out what the wall looked like. It's quite a realistic simulation. Um, I won't stay there for too long. Let's, um, let's just have a look at... Uh, it's a small print, this is... <laughs> My poor old eyes. This is the Jura uh, location, which is maintained by the Jura Tourist Board in France. And you end up um, in a simulation of the Jura region with Louis Pasteur's house available. Um, and there's even a ski resort, I think, somewhere where you can go skiing. I can... Let me fly and see if I can find it quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, I can see the ski resort now, so we'll fly over to it. <laughs> yeah. My ski flying. That's one of the nice things you can do in Second Life. Can you talk to somebody? You can, yeah. There's nobody else there. There's nobody else there. No, no. I was, um, I wonder if we can find anyone to talk to. Let's just have a quick look. Um, hang on. We've got two more minutes. Ago. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no find somebody. No. Yes, my wife's online. <laughs> <laughs> you set it up. <laughs> I'm asking her to teleport to me. What am I going to do? I'm going to grab her. <laughs> I'm just going to try and communicate with her. You can communicate with people at a distance. Just to ask her. Can I ask you, can children go to this? It's, um, it's really a it's designated 18 plus when you sign on. But there are so-called secure areas, such as that managed by the British Council, which target 13 to 17 year olds. It's actually quite difficult to get into those if you're an adult. You have to go through a sort of police criminal record uh, procedure and that, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's rather like getting a job as a teacher in a school. Um, but. Um, under 13, no, but there are virtual worlds on the, on the web which uh, are available to younger children. I don't think she's, she's probably out in the kitchen at the moment. <laughs> Making a coffee or something. I'll just go back to Eurocall if I can, if I've got time to do that.
between 800 and 1,000 US dollars, and then you have to pay second life a rent. But people do actually run businesses. They sell clothes. Some of the clothes that the avatars wear are, are actually bought. Um, but typically, uh, a complete new outfit costs you something like 50p. So it's not expensive. So if you want to equip yourself with a full set of clothing, it's a lot cheaper in Second Life than it is in real life. <laughs> um, but bear in mind that some of these clothing sellers or resellers are actually making a huge turnover with this and then they can convert the Second Life currency known as the Linden dollar into real dollars and transfer it to their credit card account. Uh, yes, there is, there is real money being made. Language Lab, the commercial company I mentioned, sell courses in Second Life. I don't know how brilliantly they're doing, but it is a commercial operation. Any other questions at all? If not, can we thank Greg very much for this very interesting. Thank you. Thank you.